everyone, welcome back to Fresh Fit and Healthy YouTube. Here I have Tracy again, if you guys remember her from my first intuitive eating video that you guys all loved. So now that I'm home, I wanted to make another video with her on just some of the questions you guys have asked about intuitive eating when it comes to just rejecting the focus on dieting and just how to kind of deal with everyone else around you when they're still dieting and focusing on this perfect body or this bikini body, especially this summer as we go into the beach season, um, and how to kind of stick to the roots of intuitive eating and kind of still listening to your body and being happy with your body despite the culture around us. So that is what we're gonna talk about today and hope you guys enjoy this video. Well, Sarah, thank you for having me again as usual. It's always a, a joy and a pleasure to talk with you. Um, I think this issue is a huge issue in terms of when you make the decision to go out, um, kind of on your own path with intuitive eating. We are in a, a, a diet-focused or weight-focused, fat-phobic world, so you're going to feel sometimes like a little bit of an outsider uh, when you're speaking this language of how hungry and how full I am and eating based what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and other people around you may be like, well, I don't eat cake because doesn't cake make you fat? And you're hearing these comments and rationally, you know, that's not true, but it's so hard not to get pulled back into that. So this is what we're going to talk about today is, well, how do we not get pulled back into that? Yeah. How do we not get pulled back into so-and-so is going to go on some kind of cleanse for five days so she can lose two pounds of water to go mm -hmm. feel like she can be comfortable at the beach and how yeah. not to get pulled into believing that that's something that's one necessary or even rational to be doing so yeah yeah and so I guess we can just start with so if someone had a question where they're trying to intuitive eat they're trying to figure this all out trying to listen to their body and then their friend comes over and says oh like I'm gonna try this bikini diet and fitness plan this summer because we have to get ready like we have it's it's beach season like we're going to the beach all weekend like so what do you tell someone like that that is trying to listen to their body but has friends in their lives that are now turning to these diets and they're feeling, okay, maybe I should do this, maybe just for like a short time. Okay. What are... Well, if you want to, it'd be kind of fun to role play that actually. Yeah. So you can be the diet friend and <laughs> okay. I'll be the one trying to um, <sighs> stay grounded. Okay. So you can, I'll even pick up what you said, like your friend wants to... Um, Go on a diet. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, what what beach are we going to? Um, we're gonna go to Miami Beach, and it's gonna be a big party. And so we really need to get in our like bikini bodies, and we just need to really start dieting so that we can look good and feel good, and just kind of impress everyone around us. And we have to go shopping, and so. We need to like be fit and skinny so that we can look good in our bathing suits. You know, I've got a pretty cool bathing suit that I'm gonna wear and I feel really good in it, so I'm pretty good, thanks. I can go shopping with you, that's, that's cool, but uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and see so you guys, that is an answer that you can give someone when you're trying to intuitively, when you're trying to be happy with yourself. Don't feel the need to fall into what people around you are doing. And that's kind of a lesson in life in general, not just with intuitive eating, um, but just truly being yourself and being okay yeah. with who you are. There's a, um, a pretty common, you probably have seen on, on Facebook and on different people's posts, or maybe definitely on ours at least, I know on mine, of um, people talking about if you want to have a beach body, there's two things you need. You need to have a bikini, and a body, and that's all that's required. So just remember that um, there's no right body to have. We all have like right bodies. And I know again that so you might even be eye rolling, like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm supposed to like my body. Um, the truth is, I know we don't all start out that way. We can start with hating the body less to, and then work our way to loving the bodies we have. Because the truth is, there's consequences um, to feel like that you have to have a certain kind of body to go out to do the things in life you want to do. So yeah, you could go on that diet with your friend, 
And you also know from probably experience, like when you do that, you become food obsessed and pretty self-absorbed and you can't eat what you want and you become like fearful again. So it brings back that dynamic of good food, bad food, which creates, again, lots of insecurity, lots of anxiety. And of course, we all know that when we undereat, we're going to have the backswing of probably overeating, especially foods that we've been denying. So it brings back that out of control thing, feeling around food again that intuitive eating definitely soothes. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things like you can do that. And I know it's so hard not to get pulled into it, but just know that like, it's not without um, consequences, unfortunately. I know that's something we all have to kind of navigate, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, um, either way is not easy, but um, obviously we both are very passionate about the idea of people can learn to listen to their body signals and be free. Yeah. So, so I guess tip number one is just surrounding yourself with positive people, surrounding yourself with people that are going to support you in what you're wanting to do and who you're wanting to be and just kind of building you up because I know we were just even talking before this video about how being surrounded by people that are bringing you down can really take you down. It's hard to stay positive and believing in yourself and believing that you're beautiful even or that you're doing great things if someone's constantly feeding you negativity. So just surrounding yourself with positive people, with people that are gonna lift you up, build you up, make you want to be better and not the opposite. Right. And it's hard because when you start intuitive eating, your relationships with people probably will shift. I mean, there might be people you are lifelong friends with that at one point you maybe shared a bond of dieting with. And that's very common, especially with women to like, this is what we do together. We don't maybe talk about deeper things, but we talk about the latest diet we're both on or who's on what pill or what what exercise regimen we're doing and when yeah. you start to kind of drift from that they will have there will be a shift so there will have to be either things that you find that you're in common with or maybe that that relationship actually really changes so those are things that come up a lot for people as well so mm -hmm. positive people hope you know we can be around as much as we can and even if we're with people who are in our lives and aren't really going anywhere but they're still in that diet mentality yeah. And they're allowed to do that. So we're not judging that they're doing that. It's just that we know that that hasn't been the freest way for us to live. And we've made that choice. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, can we keep those conversations? Like that's just somewhere you don't go with each other. Yeah. I have lots of clients with their families or with their friends. It's like, we love each other, but we just don't go there. We don't talk about food. We don't talk about weight and bodies. And, mm -hmm. and that's, there's just a, a clear boundary there. Otherwise, you know, there's, there, you're going to have conflict, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So setting boundaries too, that's a great tip of just knowing where, you, like you don't have to necessarily take people out of your life that don't want to intuitively eat or do diet, but just setting that boundary of we're not even going to discuss that because we both have just different views on this. I don't want to hear about dieting because I know it's not good for me and my life and my health. Um, and just setting those boundaries so that right. you don't start focusing on things that you don't want to be focusing on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So going along with just now kind of switching over to another side of things with intuitive eating, um, back to the comments that I received on one of my first intuitive eating videos was the fact that you that I needed to address the fact that intuitive eating isn't a quick solution. It doesn't work for everyone, as some people were saying, and that it's not going to just heal you overnight. And some of those comments were definitely true. It's not It's not going to heal you overnight. It's not going to be this quick fix of, oh, I want to intuitively, okay, now I can listen to my hunger signals. I'm never going to eat too much. Um, and I'm not ever going to struggle with eating again. Right, right. And so just, yeah, to break free from... Um like a paradigm of restriction and deprivation and maybe even binging, it takes many, honestly, years. I think that the acute early stages of it, you know, it's pretty intense for people to relearn how to do things. And you can get freedom you know, relatively soon, three months, six months, nine months. But I think it's really, there's not really a, um, for lack of a better word, there's not really an end zone. There's not really an end date. You just continue to learn about your body because your body's continuously changing anyway. So um, it's not... A quick fix to anything. It's actually just a, a, um, going back home to a more, more natural way of eating. So um, it's it's process oriented. It's not really like here's a plan and you do it and then it's over. It's like this is your life. This is how you 
learn how to eat. This is how we were born, knowing how to eat. We ate from hunger and fullness signals. And so rediscovering that takes a long time. And I know something I mentioned in the first video with you is that it's very weight neutral as well. So I know some people are looking for something when they go into the eating, hoping I'll be free and I can lose weight. Both might happen, but the likelihood of that is definitely not guaranteed. I mean, some people yeah. just stay around where they're going to be. And um, I think that's why people sometimes feel like it doesn't work because yeah. it's not the point. Intuitive mm -hmm. eating is about freedom. If you lose weight, that's just because you're over your set point, but it's never the point of it. So I know that's why a lot of people feel disappointed and they stop because like they're yeah. still not quite unhooked from the idea that I have to be happy or I can only be happy when I lose weight. And that's, like, I feel intuitive eating has now gotten this rep of being another diet, of being this set-in-stone plan, and that's not at all. Intuitive eating is a lifestyle. It's getting back to your roots, getting back to how we used to eat as kids when we never thought twice about what we would eat. We would just eat what we wanted, yeah. when we wanted, and stop when we were full. I and think that actually another point, and I think it's really important, I've seen other people mention, is that even the word intuitive eating has turned into, like, well... If you're eating from hunger and fullness, you can always, you have to follow those rules. The truth is, that, like, if we want to be really real, it's just about very, being very attuned. And that's the word I like to use because there are times when the cookies are fresh out of the oven and I want to eat them and I'm not hungry. Mm -hmm. But I'm very attuned to the fact, like, I'm not hungry. That's going to be very delicious. So I'm okay with that. I know that, like, pleasurable eating is a part of eating. And we're all going to do that. So it's not like you're breaking intuitive eating rules yeah. if you eat something emotionally. Because we're humans and we, every one of us do. The, um, the magic is where you're able to um, be very in the moment of like, I know what I'm doing with the food here. I know what role this is playing for me right now. And fully accepting of that. Yeah. No, and then, like, that brings up such great points because... I feel like intuitive eating, like she was saying, people are starting to think that I can't mess up. It's more rules to follow. And that's not the case at all. Normal eating is, I loved like a quote I saw in one of my textbooks this last semester. And it was talking about how normal eating is sometimes eating too much, mm -hmm. sometimes not eating enough one day, or sometimes eating four cookies because they taste just that good. And sometimes saving the cookies because you know they'll be there tomorrow. Absolutely. And just like... It's okay. Intuitive eating, you can't really mess up with intuitive eating unless you start dieting, unless you start getting to rules. That's when you can start to mess up with intuitive eating because right. it's all about just living normally and not having food be the focus and not, not letting that dictate your actions, not letting that dictate your every day and what you're going to do or when you're going to do it. Um, just kind of getting back to living life and using food as fuel and not just just for pleasure and every single yeah and that's a great quote from ellen satter that her her work uh, is great and um yeah f food is pleasure food is nourishment food is energy um it's part of our life but not the thing we should be thinking about every every second between meals that's for sure so if you're struggling with that that's where just getting into some kind of process with this to slow down and and recognize when you're eating and how, what's the motive for how you're eating and that's the real work so that's why it's not fast because there's a lot of time spent in really learning how to be curious and be with yourself so and just truly rejecting the diet mentality because I know I kind of talked about this in my last video but you can't kind of pick and choose when you want to intuitively eat and when you're going to try to follow some of the food rules you've had or the dieting mentality that you've had for so long like if you're trying to restrict all throughout the day because you want you don't want to have too many calories but then at night you're like okay now I'm going to try to listen to my body it's just not going to work and like I know at first when I started meeting with Tracy that's kind of what I was doing I was kind of still wanting to follow my old ways but still trying to intuitively eat and it just doesn't work because right. then you're too hungry and you're just like sitting in the kitchen binging on foods because you're like, I ha your body's telling you I haven't right. eaten enough today. And so there's no way until you start truly like releasing yourself from any kind of food rules, any kind of desire to control the food you eat, that you can actually right. start listening right. to your body. So that's, a, that's like one really good example of, of why this isn't a quick fix and why it's a process is because... Um, we might have a foot still in both camps, which is totally normal. I mean, all my clients are like that. I was like that. It's like, well, I want to be free, but I still want to like, lose weight, or I want to be free, but um, 
I'm really worried about these foods. And, it, and, it, and even as you start to explore those reasons why, I, let's say, how come you want to lose weight and what makes that important and what will happen if you do or you don't, knowing that about yourself, there's also the deeper levels of what's even the function of all this for me. Because a lot of times, like, why am I still restricting? I don't even know why I have these food rules right now. And that's where I love to do the, the deeper decoding work to figure out, like, this isn't really about my body. This is actually about this hunger, this need not being met, this whatever's going on in your life. So um, that's why it's yeah. a process, why it's not fast, mm -hmm. why sometimes, you know, I know sometimes why reading the book isn't enough. We need to kind of be around like-minded people sometimes to understand, like, oh, it's not a book to read and just get, like, here's some tips and I can do it now. Yeah. After you read the 14, 15 chapters, it is um, it is a process. So when you feel it doesn't work, it's like there's more to learn. Mm -hmm. so. so I hope this video just helped you guys out some, just some tips to take away. It's just surrounding yourself with people that are going to build you up, that are going to support you in your decisions, kind of setting boundary lines with those people that you know aren't agreeing with the lifestyle that you're choosing with intuitive eating versus dieting. And kind of just working on being attuned, being just aware while you're eating and what you're eating so that you can start to figure out those hunger signals. So you can start releasing yourself from all those food rules and just start feeling free. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let be gentle, be curious, be compassionate in the process, um, take some risk, and definitely you'll be steps further along in that process. Mm -hmm. So. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Tracy Brown. If you want to find her, she has her own website as well. Um, I will link that down below. And then, of course, me. I have freshmanhealthy.com. And find me on Instagram. Find me. Well, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And until next time, see you later, guys. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you. You don't, have, you don't have time for boys or anything, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, none of those in my life right now. <laughs>